All right, we are back here with this 48 volt system that we did uh, yesterday, right? We made a video on how to put this in a weather seal box just in case you wanted to put it outside. But the question today is, there was a couple parts when we were putting this together that was a bit sketchy. It was, you know, the drilling the holes that are like, there's not enough room to do it, you know, I don't know. Uh, some people are calling this uh, cringeworthy, but okay, whatever. It's like, that's exposed, but every other one, obviously, I, don't, I have no idea what they're talking about. Anyways, I'm like, can we do this better? Can I design a box that that would like take all those you know, things that are a little bit hard to do and make it even easier? Well, today we're gonna test that. I designed this box a while ago and then uh, it was being made and so now it just arrived. And so this is made, I think, to put those in here. I don't know if I did such a good job, but that's what I wanna test today. Can we transfer this battery inside this one here and then see if it works better uh, obviously, it's not going to look maybe as good because uh, this one's not painted. It's still raw metal, but obviously we can send it to the powder coater and get the same color as here. But today, I just want to see if it all works out, right? If all the, you know, here I tested the, the, the front face here to see if all the holes uh, matched up and stuff. But I want to see if we can actually secure that in there and it'll be like easy. Let's do it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to screw this backing plate into the wall. Just put this, which is the uh, the top plate. This is gonna make it really hard because that means you need you know, a long thing to reach the screw. Right, so big extension. Go through. So here we go. I just uh, screw these. They're very, very uh, secure there. But while you're installing them, there's it's a bit sketchy. Also, you know, it almost like this these flex when you're sitting the cells in there. Uh, both of those flex in, and uh, they create this thing where the the cells want to go out. This um, thing is that now the uh, cover is gonna be really close right here. Like there's not a lot of room. So that means we gotta isolate this front from this cover, especially right now that it's not even painted, right? So that's, that's you know, 100% uh, conductive right there. I put that in there, push it, that's gonna be a massive short. So let me see. Okay, I'm gonna try this. This is loom tape. So it's just like electrical tape is made to isolate. Right, so there's the tape uh, on the bottom here. This plate, the compression plate, has some screw uh, holes in here, and the reason for those is to install a BMS. This BMS right here is uh, top of the line. It's like exactly what's in here, and all the other, you know, uh, commercially available 48 volt batteries, you know, rack mount batteries, and so that is what I am going to uh, put in here, install in here, and then uh, we're just using those little standoffs right there. So those holes should match this, and I think there's several. You can put it this way, you can put it that way. I'm gonna see which way is the best way. I see some problems here uh, mostly that those screws right there are hitting the back of this so this uh, board is too close to the bottom part where this flange is at right so the head it doesn't even clear the heads of the screws so what I need to do is I need to increase the width of this plate and then move this that way because I don't want to move it this way because then that uh, well there's there's gonna be clearance issues here right this is where the output of this battery box is gonna be at. And so, yeah, 
we're gonna have to move it out this way. So, which means that I have to redesign this, slightly redesign it, make it wider, move those screws this way. Um, yeah, that's why this is uh, so necessary. The building this in here and see, you know, where all these improvements can happen. The next thing to do is try to put the cover on there without shorting out the entire thing into a big mess, right? So. So next we got to put the little screen. This is for the uh, BMS. And uh, I just put a big square in here because I want to do a PCB that goes on front because that will, it would allow me to put text in here to, to, so that you can navigate this, you know what each one of these buttons is. So I got this wrong in here. These don't even match here. I thought I had gotten it down in the front over here, but yeah, these are exactly the same and they don't fit. I'm gonna have to go and look exactly how those screws, you know, how much off I am and then adjust that. Um, and then do the, you know, the overlay here with the PCB. So anyways, that's a simple fix here. Uh, then the only thing to put on here is gonna be this bottom piece. But this bottom piece here has this hole, which I thought it was gonna be for, you know, exit, an exit point for the cables, right? But we all could also do that through here and put big terminals, sort of like these guys in here. Uh, except, you know, more affordable ones. Those are really expensive. Uh, so we have options here. We can change this plate to a bunch of different ways. But what do you guys think? Did we, can we make a better box than the $100, $110, I think, uh, Amazon box that we can buy? What do you think? The size is different. You see that? It's a little bit longer, but it's a little bit skinnier. So this one has quite a bit of room in the sides and you need that room. Oh, also a lot deeper, right? Because, uh, well, the one that is two inches shallower than this was really troublesome. You, it was really hard. Uh, there, there were some clearance issues here with this door. So in order to have this swinging door and hinge stuff, you'd need a lot of clearance between the cells. Because this one is a much simpler design, you can be really close to the, to the cells. And the, the reason why I did this size right here so close and I didn't add more is because this right here is also a standard. I think this is uh, the size for three units, uh, rack space units. So if we wanted to, we could make this box right here, this same box into a rack mount uh, battery, right? Obviously the, the width here is non-standard uh, and then the length, right? So a lot of these uh, batteries, you see how these racks are really short. So we would have to make something, but you could definitely, uh, put this in one of these racks in here and it's the same. This is a four space, I think, and that's a three space. So it would be a really, really compact uh, four, right? Like around four kilowatt hour battery, rack mount battery. But if you can get it for like less than a thousand bucks, right? I think it might be a really good deal. And a lot of you guys might be interested, especially if it comes basically the same thing with the same BMS that's in here, same with the same ports, the same features, right? Other than that, it's just a little bit smaller and uh, well, a lot cheaper. And so that's, that's what we're gonna do here. So anyways, uh, there's a lot of issues with this, like as a kid, one of those issues, for example, is the fact that this cover uh, goes in here and attaches through these screws on the side. Well, if you many times, a lot of people, what they're gonna do is they're gonna try to do what I just did here, put it right next to another box. Maybe this is your inverter. And so if you do that, you won't be able to put the screws on the sides here. So maybe what I need to do is revisit and, and change the design so that the sides can be installed, right? And then the cover can be installed by putting screws way up here in the front instead of having them do through the side. 
Um, this design might work really well if we decide to build the batteries in-house, right? So, so think about this. This is already put together. You have everything so you don't have to open. And now I did put some uh, screw holes here so that we can put an L bracket, for example. So we do an L bracket here. It's attached to the side of this box and all you have to do is just put this box right up against the wall and then just run screws to that l bracket so you'll have uh you'd never have to go inside of this you never have to go through the batteries any of this stuff but the way that it is right now it's a it's a kit as i designed it sort of like a kit so you can build this uh you know a single person like me did it right we don't have to pick up 16 cells at a time you could do one by one put it in there just a bit sketchy i think still there's some things that I can do to make that, that experience a little bit better. But definitely, this is a lot easier than what I did yesterday here on this one. And uh, I think in some ways, it looks a lot better. And it's a much better use of that space. You know, you can put another one here. You could fit more of those batteries this way uh, than this way. But then the benefit of that is that this is water, uh, you know, this is weather sealed. So you could put this outside. This one, you can't because, you know, it's got a lot of, there's no ceiling in there. It's just, you know. So what do you guys think? Should I make this available? Should I keep uh, developing this and, uh, you know, work out all the little kinks in here? And, and better yet, should I offer this already as a built battery, like plug and play? So that you could just install it into the wall and connect it. I think I could do this for a lot less right so think about this these are about i think the cheapest ones are like thirteen hundred dollars or fourteen hundred without the screen right it's just like the the most basic bms uh, i think i could do this whole thing for maybe like nine hundred dollars or something right um this this box right here doesn't cost me much more than that i think in numbers and not even that many like maybe if i make 20 at a time I think I can get the prices down to like less than a hundred bucks. Uh, and if I'm uh, clever enough, I, we could make them so they're easy to assemble. So it doesn't take a lot of, a lot of labor in our, in our end to put these together. Uh, we would have to, you know, powder coat them probably white or black or whatever, and then put the thing in there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you guys are uh, on board with that because we have a lot of these cells, so we have to kind of sell them. Or in the, and post if you're interested in a kit form of this so that you can do all this work and put it in there, right? And that would be way cheaper, way easier for us to ship to you. Uh, probably could be a, available a lot sooner or like a fully finished, right? And I just kind of like to see what what the, you guys, the viewers of these videos would be interested in and if uh, some any of this stuff is, is viable, you know? Um, okay, this is a quick video. Thank you for watching once again, and we'll see you on the next one. We're definitely gonna be building a, some other types, different ones. I have one, this massive battery that I've always wanted to build and I never had the chance. But now that we have cells in large quantities and they're affordable, then we're gonna be able to do it. Okay, so stay tuned for those projects. See you guys on the next one, bye. Okay, here's how you order uh, these cells at the special pricing. You go to jack35.com, then you go, oh, look at that, price drop, right at the thing here. So you come here and then the drop down menu shows you one cell for $41, and then one box of six cells, and then you go into the third option here, 16 cells for $48. 
I mean, 48 volts, and then that brings you to $479. You do the math, divide that by 16, you come down to just a tiny little less than $30 a cell. So that's how you get a special deal, and uh, then you can build your own Powerwall, just like we did in this video. All right, see you guys on the next video. Bye.